I was sitting there and it was like the Lord spoke to me and said, cut it off. You're listening to the devil talk to you right mm -hmm. now. And it was, it was, you could feel something inside. It was almost like inside your head trying to, to, to rearrange the Rubik's cube. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm there and it's like, my thoughts were like, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's, uh, get it back on the Bible. But you could feel a spirit trying to change the way that you were thinking by listening. The Bible says that there's coming a last grand deception. How can we make sure that we're part of the elect? Find out on this episode of LED Live. Welcome everybody to LED Live. Today we got an exciting topic about the deception of the last days. I'm always excited to talk about prophecy and last days deceptions and how we can, you know, things that we can do to not be deceived. So we got our guest with us, Eric Wilson. He's been on the show a number of times. You have a, a wealth of knowledge. I always like doing shows with you, man. You bring out some good points. So what do you got for us about this last great deception and what is this cosmic Christ we're talking about? Well, what we're going to be looking at today is based on a prophecy that we find in the Gospels. Jesus said that there were going to be many people that would come in the last days claiming to be Him, claiming mm -hmm. to be Christ. And actually, before we go, um, I was going to ask Keith if he would open up and read one of those prophecies for us from our Savior. Okay, so this is from Mark 13, 14 through 22, if you want to follow along. It says, So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down into the house, nor enter to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in the winter, for in those days there will be tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the creation of God, which created until this time, nor ever shall be. And unless the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he choose, he shortened those days. Mm -hmm. If anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, he is there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. And take heed, or it says, but take heed, see, I have told you all things beforehand. Amen. That wow. first part reminds me of like, you know, the basic instructions when there's a fire, just get out. Don't mm -hmm. run back in for anything, even though it might be impulse, just leave. Yeah. Amen, mm -hmm. amen. One so, thing I notice in here is he's saying, you know, if there's anyone who says they're Christ, in some secret place or in the desert, don't look. That That is a clue to me that if anyone is on earth saying, I'm Christ, it can't be him, right? Because that's right. That's why it's so important for us to understand certain things in prophecy, how it's going to play out. You know, a lot of people say, well, we can agree to disagree on certain things, but I think all of it, you know, I think all these little little false doctrines or little misunderstandings will trip you up in the big scheme of everything. Do you know something that um, that you just said that really has also it stood in my mind? If they say he's there, don't go look. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see here uh, this is happening right now. I wish we had some of the video footage, but there are there are men all over the world right now claiming mm -hmm. to be Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You've got a man down in uh, in Miami that's mm -hmm. got millions yeah. of followers. You've got a guy in Russia that's been claiming to be Christ. He used to be a police officer. He's got thousands of followers. Mm -hmm. You've got another man somewhere down in South America that has got a mansion down there, millions of followers. You'd think they'd follow the script, you know, be a carpenter mm -hmm. or a lowly. Yeah. But if when you read through the prophecies all throughout the Bible, Christ doesn't touch earth for the yeah, second that's time. That's right. So that's a telltale sign that no, yeah. I don't think he's over there or living in a mansion. That that's doesn't right. Compute with what the Bible is saying. What really struck me is, is that Jesus says when they say that I'm over there, don't even look. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see this coming up. When the Antichrist, the, the main one, the main one who is claiming to be Christ appears, 
the whole world is going to see them on the internet, on mm. their cell phones. I mean, right now people live in grass huts with a dirt floor in some countries and they've got a cell phone That's or right. they've got, they've got access. Yeah. So Christ is like, don't even look mm -hmm. because if it were possible, this will deceive even the very elect. It's very convincing. So convincing. He's saying, don't even look because yeah, you because you be would fooled. be, you could be deceived. Yeah. And I, I've realized that cause I'm thinking, okay, Adam and Eve were, pure and holy and had never sinned and Eve was deceived. Yeah. Adam was not deceived because he knew better. Mm -hmm. he, he chose to do it, but Eve was deceived yeah. by this being that they had been warned about. Ah, you make a good point because sometimes the deception isn't only in not knowing, it's the pressure to go ahead and go yes. with it. So we may mm. see the deception for what it is, but be like Adam and say, oh, but my family and oh, but my yeah. job or whatever. And That's go right. Through. That's a good point. Wow. Yeah. That's a good point. And another thing I see also in that, in that, in that verse that we just read uh, is when people talking to you, the deception to hear is like, it, looks, it sounds very like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And they go, how's it going to be the difference, you know? Yes. And like it would take more time just to listen or just go to those places that say, don't even go look at it. Yeah, because if you look, I mean, we've never seen an angel show up mm. in, in brilliance. Mm. What would you do? I mean, think about the people Believe now it. that are having experiences <laughs> and they go, I know it was of God because yeah. of the way I felt. Yeah. What are you going to do when... Lucifer, I don't even want to call him Lucifer, Satan himself appears as a, a dazzling being and people are going to go, that was Christ. He yeah. healed the sick. Yeah. He was raising the dead. He, what are people going to do? So I was thinking about there's so much propaganda with this caricature of the devil being with horns and he's red with a pitchfork that people, they, they associate, oh no, he looks scary. So if, if I feel love or I see you know, light, then that can't be the devil because he can't make you feel love, right? Well, ecstasy yeah. can make you feel love, right? You can pop a drug. So we can't, we can't fall for that. We, I think that's the biggest trick is that he's trying to make, no, Satan's really scary looking and so that means we, makes you feel bad and evil. <laughs> we got to stand on this. Right. Thus saith the Lord. When Christ comes, there's no controversy mm. in who he is. Amen. The Bible says every knee will bow, every mm. tongue will bow. Amen. Confess. And so you're not going to have differing opinions. Even those Amen. who don't want to admit it will admit it. The right. devil himself will yeah. bow. Amen. Uh, good point. Let's jump in on another verse. Uh, this is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It says, the Apostle Paul was inspired and he wrote to us and said, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, speaking of the day of Christ's return, shall not come except there come a falling away first. And the word falling away doesn't mean abandoning Christ. It means an apostasy. Mm. Every time the nation of Israel, Old Testament Israel, went into apostasy, they didn't say, okay, we're not going to serve God. Most often it was, we're going to blend God with paganism. Mm -hmm. Normally that's what the apostasy looked like. And here we're told that there's going to be an apostasy and that man of sin will be revealed. The word revealed in Greek actually means unmasked or unveiled. So that tells us, it tells me when I read that, Satan is going to veil his glory and then it's going to be unveiled. He's going to be seen for who he really is. And it calls him something. It says the son of perdition. That phrase is only used two times in all of scripture. This verse and one verse in the Gospels. About Judas, right? About Judas. Mm. And what and this really struck me because I wasn't digging for it. It was like the Lord just opened my eyes one day and I was like, son of perdition, son of perdition. Wait a minute. That's what Jesus said about Judas. When Jesus was first gathering the disciples to him, Judas came among them. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't call Judas. Judas wanted a place because he... He saw this man, he saw the, the following that was happening, and he thought, he could be the Christ. He could be the king that we've mm -hmm. all been waiting for. And if I get in now, I'm getting in on the ground floor. You know, I'll, I'll have a place, a high place in that kingdom. When Judas came among them, Jesus said, have I not chosen you 12? And yet one of you has a devil, has an evil spirit. 
From the day that Jesus had begun, there was an evil spirit that was working in Judas' life. And Jesus knew it. Um, we're told, I believe it's in Desire of Ages, that that spirit was a spirit called selfishness. Mm. So it wasn't like he was cutting himself or throwing up or had, you know, mm. grotesque things he was doing. It was just selfishness had taken the throne of his heart. Okay, so he's got an evil spirit that's influencing him, and he's in ministry mm -hmm. for three and a half years with our Savior. On the last night, before they came to take Christ and arrest him. He's at the Passover supper, and you can read this in, in each of the gospels. And um, I believe it was Peter. He, John was sitting right next to Jesus. It says he had his head like laying on Jesus's chest. And he was younger. He was the youngest of the disciples, which that really appeals to me because it's like, maybe he was 17 or something. The other guys are in their 20s or 30s, you know. Mm. And Jesus was young. He was only, you know, 33 by that time. But John is like leaning on him. Maybe it's late at night. And Peter's like, John, ask him who this person is, who the one is that's going to deceive him. Because Jesus had told them, one of you is going to deceive or betray. betray me. And Peter said, ask him who it is. And Jesus said, the one that dips his bread when I dip my bread. Hmm. That's who it is. And about that time, Jesus took his bread and he dipped it in whatever the, the oil or whatever they were dipping it in. And Judas reached and dipped at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. And Jesus looked at him and he said, what thou doest, do quickly. Mm -hmm. And this is what caught me. It says at that moment, Satan himself entered into Judas. Mm -hmm. So there was an evil spirit that had kept the door open. Selfishness. One sin had kept that door open. Mm -hmm. And because Judas had continually yielded to that, Satan said, I'm not going to leave this job to any other evil spirit. I'm taking this job. No one's going to mess up on this. Because they're, they're angels, but they do mess up. And they get in trouble when they mess up with Satan. He was like, I'm taking this job. I'm going to be the one that makes sure he gets put on the cross. And Je Jesus called him the son of perdition. Satan entered into a man. So, without giving the whole story away, that's, that's something just to kind of pay attention to. But look how subtle the contract signing was. Mm -hmm. You know, dipping, something seemingly insignificant, dipping your bread in some oil. It wasn't like, you know, drawing blood or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's something that someone could overlook. You yeah, know, that's, it, a, that's a good So, point. miraculous signs and wonders, we might be looking for one particular thing and neglecting the small, what we perceive that's as a, small, that are point. actually pretty miraculous in context to what's going on. Or a kiss on the cheek to your Savior, mm. you know. That's a good point, too. One thing I'm noticing about this Unmasked, Unveiled, <clears throat> we see a, a lot of movies about the end times, you know, and it's always like this ruler who just hates Christians, you know. I think that's a false perception, you know. It's yeah. like, that would be way too obvious. So I, I remember, like, Obama was in the office and stuff, and they were like, look, he's he's blaspheming, He's he hates the Bible and all this. I'm like, that, that's not very deceiving, is right. it? Yeah. More deceptive is someone who's going to have to be unveiled, unmasked, because you don't see it on the surface, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's what I think we're seeing here. That's why it has to be un unmasked. The Apostle Paul goes on and says, speaking of this son of perdition, the man of sin, it says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And then he says, and this, this really was startling. He said, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And I was like, wait a minute. This is Second Thessalonians. And he's saying, last time I was with you, I told you about this. Mm -hmm. If you go back to First Thessalonians, there's some, there's some clues about what he's talking about here. He says, remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, but now you know he that is withholding, he that's holding back this last deception. He says, you know him because you know God and you know Christ. He says that he might be revealed in this time. So God is holding this deception back so that it can be revealed, unveiled in the perfect time. And then the apostle Paul says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. 
And on this picture that we've got on the screen, this really struck me because this is a, an old uh, Greek or Roman theater. And it was funny because when you go into the Bible and you look up the word hypocrites, where Jesus says, you know, you hypocrites, talking to the Pharisees, the Greek word is actors and actresses. Mm. In the Greek theater and in the Roman theater, there was something behind a mask. And Paul just got finished saying, this thing is going to be unveiled. It's going to be unmasked. He says, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So for me, I love mysteries. I, I love figuring out riddles and secrets. I think all of us do. And even yeah. as Bible students, it's like, there's nothing more than, oh God, what is this? You know, help yeah. me to understand this. And, mm. you know, I found something that nobody else has seen. Mm. And it's like, I was like, Lord, what is this mystery of iniquity? And I started searching all these other, you know, authors and, and writers and theologians and a lot of people have really dug into that for years. What is this mystery of iniquity? And then the Lord showed me something that was just really startling. There's actually two mysteries that are talked about in the Bible. You have the mystery of iniquity in 2 Thessalonians, and then you have another mystery that's called the mystery of godliness. And the Lord just impressed me one day, Eric, it's a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. right? If you want to know what is wrong with the counterfeit, how to identify it, understand what the true is. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what the mystery of iniquity is, find out what the mystery of godliness is. So we'll get there in just a second, because that really, it opens up a lot. This is a quote from a, a little book called Testimonies to Ministers, and this, this was really startling. It says, as we near the close of time, there will be a greater and still greater external parade of heathen power. <laughs> And I thought, okay, that means there's going to be a lot of heathen people doing heathen things. But then it goes on and it says, heathen deities will manifest their signal power and will exhibit themselves before the cities of the world. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, there's a part of me that's like, oh, wow, this is going to be cool. And oh, wow, this is going to be a little bit scary. But I thought, heathen deities are going to exhibit themselves before the cities of the world. And I thought, one day... And then the Lord said, Eric, keep reading. Mm. The very next sentence says, and this delineation has already begun to be fulfilled. Uh, and you know what I was thinking is, heathen deities have, have exhibited themselves before the cities of the world. Mm. Now I understand. If you watch some of the videos that you guys have done and that we've done, like superheroes and stuff. you've got Hollywood actors, you've yeah. got musicians, you've got authors that are all claiming there's evil spirits that come into yeah. me to, so that I can act and perform. That wasn't me on stage. That was Roman. Well, that's interesting wording. Heathen deities will manifest their signal. I mean, there's a there's a a large acceptance of Eastern religion, and mm. people are saying, "I will manif let me manifest such and that's such so I can point. get it." That's a good point. That's like exactly. So yes, of course, on a large scale, actors and whatnot. But what about? you know, regular people, <laughs> which yeah. actors no, are regular no, people as well, right. but right. just like the general population who is manifest or wanting to manifest and these heathen deities are doing it through them. In and their you lives. know, some of the Eastern, like the, the Hindu and some of the Buddhists and stuff, they will actually say that our purpose here is to manifest our innate divinity. Mm. They're wow. saying that we're gods, which that's exactly what Satan told Eve in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Mm. You will be like God. And they're saying, well, that's our whole goal is to manifest that we are gods. Mm -hmm. And then the author of this book says, all need wisdom carefully to search out the mystery of iniquity. Heathen deities are going to manifest before the cities of the world. And they equate this with the mystery of iniquity that figures so largely in the winding up of earth's history. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was like, okay, mystery of iniquity and we've got mystery of godliness. So we look at the mystery of godliness. 1 Timothy 3.16, it tells us. Somebody says, I want to be a godly man. I want to be a godly woman. This is the only way it can happen. Mm -hmm. It says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Mm -hmm. God was manifest in the flesh. Wow. There's no other way that we can be godly except God is manifest in our flesh. Christ is manifest in us, the hope of glory. He's asking for the same thing. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. No, go 
expand. So, I mean, okay, so let's go back to the verse. What was it? Oh, 2 Thessalonians first, or this one? 1 first Thessalonians 3. 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy 3.16. So yes, God was manifest in the flesh. Yes. Oh, he's talking about Jesus, though. Not, not us well, as his followers. Let, let, me, let, me show, let me show you something. Look at this one. You will love this, Candy. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He says, always bearing about, speaking of us, always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, so that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Wow. For, and it gets better. Listen to the next one. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, so that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Whoa. You know, Satan isn't that creative, is he? <laughs> He's just no. taking exactly what's in the Bible and twisting it. But yeah, it just goes back to the constant war. Who is on the throne of your heart? Amen. Who has your attention? Who, who are you allowing to manifest and all these things in, in our lives? It's, that's incredible. Amen. Wow. And for me, this I got excited because I was like, by understanding this is what the devil is going to do, manifest in human flesh, mm -hmm. I was like, but that's what God wants to do. That's mm -hmm. what the Bible, and all of a sudden, Christ in you, the hope of glory, it's like, that's not just a theological phrase. Right. He wants to live in us. Like if you get a chance to read that book, Desire of Ages, page 161, that was God's purpose from the very beginning is for him to live and dwell inside of it, literally. Mm. And that's exciting. Mm. I'm like, we've got a God that loves us so much, he wants to be one with us. Mm. There's a similar thought expressed in Colossians chapter one. It says, I now rejoice, this is verse 24, in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery, which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but is now revealed to his saints. Oh, wow. To them, God willed to make known what the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hmm. Wow. Look at that. It says, the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but is now made manifest to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God in us. Let me, I'm going to give you one more. I know we're taking stuff that we don't have on the screen, but forgive it's me. A Bible but, study, man. Yeah. Turn, turn there if you have a Bible with you. This is so beautiful. Um, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And people, I've had people tell me before, well, you're taking that too literally. I'm like, listen, when I read the Gospels, Jesus raised the dead, he healed the sick, he cast out demons. It was literal. Mm. I want a God that will manifest his self in my life, literally. I don't need just head knowledge. The power of sin over sin. Amen. I don't think any promise God says to us is figurative. Amen. Right. A promise is a promise. He plans to do it. Candy, if you would um, read this. It's 2 Corinthians... Actually, read verse 14. It's chapter 6, verse 14 through 16. Stop forming inappropriate relationships with unbelievers. Can right and wrong be partners? Can light have anything in common with darkness? Amen. Can Christ agree with the devil? Interesting. Yeah. Can, a, <laughs> can a believer share life with an unbeliever? Can God's temple contain false gods? Clearly, mm. we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will mm. live and walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Amen. In the King James, it says, you are the temple of the living God. Mm -hmm. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and I will walk in them. If it was literal in Christ's life, and mm -hmm. he said he was, he yeah. said, the words I'm speaking, mm -hmm. it's not me speaking it. It's my Father that's in me. The miracles I'm doing, it's God in me. I and my Father are one. Mm -hmm. In John chapter 17, 21, that was his last prayer before Calvary. He said, Father, I want them all to be one like you and I are one. Mm -hmm. God was in Christ reconciling the world. That's what he wants to do in us. Wow. Uh, also, I want to share uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. 
Ephesians 3, 16? Yes. Okay. You know, we're talking about the, you know, God in us and stuff like that. Yes, sir. Uh, it says that, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might by his spirit and the inner man. Mm -hmm. Wow. To be strengthened yeah. with might. Keith, do you have a, a, a Strong's on your computer? Mm-hmm. Look and see what that word might is. I wonder, I know sometimes it'll be like dunamis, but I don't know if that's what that is in that verse. In Ephesians 3, Which is like 16. dynamic, miraculous. So it's by His Spirit, we can, we're can we going to be, you know, a strength with His might and His Spirit Amen. inciting us. So it's not a little wiki, Christy, you know, Christian out there. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people in the world say, oh yeah, you guys Christian, you guys cannot do whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, yeah. we have... That's what it is. What t Tell us, what's the word? Yeah. That's what it is. Dunamis? Mm -hmm. And what's the definition? While he looks for that, in my translation, verse 17, when we continue uh -huh. from what you were reading, then Christ shall live in you through faith. And what that tells me is if, if there's faith involved, that means there's not necessarily always some outward, some massive mm, expression yeah. that Christ is living inside of us. Not saying it doesn't happen. The Miracles action. happens all the time. Yeah. Um, just the fact that we're breathing is a miracle. But... Mm. Sometimes it's just a regular day, <laughs> but Christ is still living within us. So it's basically, you know, depending on how it's used, it, it could be strength, it could be power, or it could be might. Those are kind of the uh, words involved, depending on the passage. There's, an, there's another definition too, uh, miraculous power for yeah. dunamos. It, it's, mm, yeah. you know, it's interesting, like you said, Candy too, Christ lived here for 30 years prior to us seeing mm. him enter his ministry right. and he lived and God was in him. That's right. Mm. Amen. Mm. Well, before we move on, I just wanted to bring out the dual application here where it says God was manifest in flesh and Kendi was saying, oh, that's Jesus. Yeah. So you got God manifesting in the flesh as Jesus. And then you also have God manifesting in the flesh and his people. And we're and the, the body of we're the body of Christ. Yeah, and so the counterfeit is not only Satan manifesting in the flesh as the Antichrist, but also Satan manifesting in all the people. Amen. Who are doing his will through all of his evil spirits that are yeah. getting in through all his you know millions of ways. So you're literally you're a follower of Christ. You're a follower of Satan. You're under one of Black two flags. White. That's yeah. right. I'm going to go on just a little bit more from that book, Testimonies to Ministers. It says, The perils of the last days are upon us, and in our work we are to warn the people of the danger that they are in. Let not the solemn scenes which prophecy has, been, has revealed be left untouched. If our people as Christians were half awake, mm. if they realized the nearness of the events portrayed in the book of Revelation, a reformation would be wrought in our churches and many more would believe the message. Amen. We have no time to lose. God calls upon us to watch for souls as those that must give an account. That's and that was written in the 1800s. Yeah. If the church was half awake. Do you guys feel like you're in danger? I feel like the whole world is in danger. <laughs> yeah. Because based off of what this, this author is saying in the beginning, like we are to warn people of the danger that they are in. Just like, mm, so that can be difficult sometimes when yeah, they can't see. even in, in scripture, the Lord will come and people will be marrying and partying and there's mm. be like, just you like, know, like a, it's the same old, same day. old day. Yeah. Do you know what's neat though? Cause like sometimes I've, I've had people tell me, um, warning people of the danger means mm. you, you're doing that wrong and you, know, and you get resistance. Mm. If somebody can see, and I'm not saying that we're not supposed to preach, but I'm saying if you're living a life of holiness and victory, other people, they want that. Mm -hmm. I remember I heard a man one time, he was talking about, look, if you're, if you're trying to witness to a Muslim, here we've got a whole series of studies of how to witness to a Muslim. If you're trying to witness to a Buddhist, here's a whole series of studies of how to witness to a Buddhist. And in my mind, I'm thinking it's techniques. It's like sales pitch. How do I how do I wiggle my way in and squirm my way in between their guard? And then it was like the Lord was like, Eric, it's easy. Whether you're a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Muslim or a, a Christian, you've all got the same problems. 
you've all got problems in your marriages, you've got mm -hmm. problems with children, you've got problems at work, you've got problems. I don't care who you are. You know when you feel guilty when you've done wrong. Mm -hmm. You can say, I don't believe in God. How can you still feel guilty? Mm -hmm. You feel guilt for sin because God put that inside of us. Mm -hmm. But we have the answer. So instead of trying to do theological wiggle, you know, through and play a chess game and get through their defenses, address where they're hurting. Show them, I've got an answer that can fix that. You've got a disease. Guess what? I know exactly the, the herb that will help to fix that. And you know what? Then they'll want to know everything that they can find out about the Christ and the God you serve. Yeah. And that makes it easy. Because it says the love of God or the love of Christ is what brings a person to repentance. Not because you're saying you're doing wrong. They already know they're doing wrong. That's or right. They, they don't want to hear it or whatever. But when they see that love, that compassion coming through, hey, I, got, I can help you. Why are you so loving, you know? Yeah, it's like Mary Magdalene. I mean, she was a prostitute. She didn't need Jesus to yell at her and say, you're a prostitute and you're going to go to hell. You better change. And mm -hmm. you're like, but he looked at her and he said, she saw that he loved her because she was probably unclothed mm -hmm. to, to the most part. I'm sure he draped something over her. Mm -hmm. He was hiding her shame where everybody else was trying to expose her. And so him just covering her was showing his love. Yeah. When everybody else is like, they got the stones ready, and Jesus is like, you know, I'm not condemning you. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that what you're doing is right, but I didn't come here to punish you. I came here to set you free. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've got to do as Christians. Yeah. What love. I'd like to give an example to your point about warnings, because there are different kinds of warnings, and we need to act appropriately depending on the circumstance. Yes. There's the warning that a mother's yelling, or not even yelling, just run and grabs her child if they're in the street and a car is coming. But I remember uh, there's another kind of warning. I was at a church social, running, playing, have a good, having a good time with my friends. But the church, the, the basement that we were in had these pillars. So my mom just kept saying, hey, you know, calm down. <laughs> stop mm. running around. Well, she wasn't screaming at me. She was just telling me calmly, stop running around. But I kept doing it. I was having fun. Anyway, I ran and <laughs> smacked right into the pillar. I actually still have the bump today. Mm. But <laughs> Um, if I had just listened to that warning, you know, that it didn't look like there was any danger. Mm -hmm. um, but based off of what we were doing, we were heading into danger. So that's just, you know, an example of different types of warning that are still as important. Yes. And will prevent us from there some are. painful consequences. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All kinds of warnings in our world. And a lot of them are silent witnesses. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's a you good can board. pick up all kinds of products and there is a, you know, something on there that says warning. I mean, there are certain chemicals. I remember when I worked in a, a laboratory, it's the only time I was really uh, unsettled with the stuff I was working with. I pulled out a bottle. It was from the Bayer Chemical Company. It was this big, very little tiny bottle. We just use it to make a standard. And uh, on that bottle was a skull and crossbones. Oh, wow. And I was like, Better make sure I have those gloves on. Mm. Right. You know, better make sure you have your your eyewear protection on. Better make sure you have a, which we did anyway. But the label wasn't screaming at me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't talking to me at all. But it was saying Sigh. something mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. And so that's that's a you know for those people who drink coffee or hot beverages or something, there's a warning on there. It's this true. is hot. Mm. It's not screaming at you. You can choose to slam it if you want, but you're going to suffer the consequences. Mm. So there's all kinds of warnings that are silent warnings that we encounter from day to day. Amen. Mm. Good point. The Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians, where we go back, you know, one, one book in the Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, um, he kind of gives us a hint of what he was talking about in 2 Thessalonians. He says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. I have a lot of Christians tell me that. Well, don't, we don't need to know prophecy because it's coming like a thief in the night. And they quote that one verse. But if you read the, ne <laughs> if you read the next statement, he says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, mm -hmm. and they shall not escape. You know, whenever I hear peace and safety, you know, I'm not being conspiracy, but I think of the UN, because yeah. that's what they're all about, peace yeah. and safety. Um, 
you know, and we've got this picture here on the screen of the whole world being brought together. You know, let's mm -hmm. all just get along, put aside our differences, and, and unite. The Apostle Paul goes on and says, the Lord's coming like a thief in the night, but then listen to what the next statement is. Mm -hmm. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as mm -hmm. a thief. You are all the children of light and children of the day. God says His Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So if we're children of the light, it's because this is what we feed on. If you eat light, you'll be filled with light. Mm -hmm. If you eat darkness, you'll be filled with darkness. He says, we are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Mm. I, I can remember when I was a young man, uh, was not living for God at all. I used to drink lots of alcohol. Every, I drank every day. Mm. I mean, every day. Mm. On the job, off the job, because I worked for myself. You know, we worked in a, an auto uh, shop where we did security systems. And I mean, we just drank all the time. I was never sober. God is telling us, be sober. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean simply don't drink. It means keep your mind focused on what matters. Be Focus on the, on the time that we're living in. If I knew that, was, that Christ was coming this Friday, would I be at a football game on Wednesday? Yeah. I mean, could I go and sit and watch the Super Bowl knowing that in two days the end of the world was going to happen? There's no, I'd, be, I'd be sitting there going, who cares who wins the football yeah. game? Christ is coming, mm. and Christ is telling us that. People will say, well, why are you always picking on movies, or why are you always picking on this? And I'm like, if you realize the time that we're living in, would I have time to waste on things that are of less importance? Mm. I mean, how many people on the road where I live don't know Jesus, don't know He's coming back, don't know that He really loves them? So I'm going to sit and, and goof off for hours reading a book or playing a game, a video game, when there's people down the road that are going to burn yeah. because they don't know. Wow. And that doesn't mean go down and beat their door down yelling at them, but... At least get to know them. Yeah. I don't even... I mean, I, I'm guilty. I don't really know my neighbors that well. I've met them, but it's not like we hang out or anything. And It's yeah, like you, you take them a, a gift, you, you buy them a loaf of bread, or you take them flowers, or you just say, hey, I just you just befriend people, and that opens the door for conversation. Mm. Yeah, a good, a good way to start that, too, is um, asking them what you can pray about for them. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good thing. Yeah, Because you know? then you have this follow-up built in. You, you need to come back and see, has the Lord been answering Amen. that prayer? Amen. And, and people are generally open to prayer, whether, yeah. you know, whatever life has brought them. You know, it's, you're right, Keith, because it's like if you show concern, hey, I'd like to pray for you. Is there anything that you could use prayer for? It, even most atheists will not get in a, an argument or get mm -hmm. in a you know a ball of knots over that. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, you know, my aunt's got cancer. You know, mm -hmm. would you pray for that? If you pray in in faith, God will answer. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, that person's like, man, I remember that guy. Oh, that woman prayed for me mm -hmm. or prayed for my aunt. Mm -hmm. That's how we tear those walls down. Right. So Paul is telling us that a deceiver's coming. Someone who is, is, looks one way, but there's really something else hiding behind the mask. Um, and there's a number of different cultures that have talked about this. You know, the Mayans talked about it. Uh, the Aztecs talked about it. I think it was uh, Quetzalcoatl was uh, the name of the god that they have been mm -hmm. expecting to come. Quetzalcoatl. How do you pronounce it? Quetzalcoatl. Oh, wow. Mm. <laughs> I hope you guys got that. He was saying Gets the American version. <laughs> <laughs> but they prophesied that this being, mm. Quetzalcoatl, or mm -hmm. Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> we'll just dub his voice. Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do that. Um, yeah. But in the prophecies, like the mm -hmm. Mayan prophecies, mm -hmm. it's, this is scary. Mm -hmm. They actually said that when, and you bear with me, uh -huh. Quetzalcoatl, now I'm not even going to be able to say it correctly, <laughs> or messed up. They said that when he returned, he mm -hmm. was coming with 12 lesser gods with him. Mm -hmm. And I thought, 12? That's in the Mayan prophecies. 12 disciples. Yeah, 12 disciples. I mean, that's just, why would, it, why would the pagan have that? Didn't they have a base 12 number system? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's why the 12 I months. I think they did. Really? I think they had a base 12 number system. 
Let me check that. Do you know, that would be interesting too, because if you had the sun god, which is sort of symbolic of the son of God, and you had 12 signs of the zodiac, mm -hmm. which would be the 12 lesser gods, the 12 planetary gods. Yeah. No. No? They use base 20. So it must have been another... Another um, culture. Civilization. Another culture, yeah, another civilization. It, and it, it could be the Incas or one of those. That, that like would be interesting. They had a base 12. So, but it's not the Mayans. Jumping in from there, you know, we've got a picture on the screen of what's called a ziggurat or a, a pyramid. The, mm -hmm. the ziggurat is a stepped pyramid, not a, a perfect one. Okay. Um, you know, the Incas use this, the Mayans, the Aztecs, mm -hmm. they found them all in every culture around the world. They have found ziggurats. And that tells me something. Wherever these people had been scattered from, mm -hmm. they brought with them the memory of one pyramid mm. or a ziggurat tower of babel yeah. the whole world was gathered together as one at the tower of babel and god said this is not going to go good mm -hmm. not that he was scared of them but he said if we don't stop this now there's nothing that they won't accomplish that they're putting their minds to have you been to one of those places no i've been have you it is such a amazing uh, we went to these ruins uh in 2011 and I don't know, it was not a holiday or anything. They're kind of small, not like, uh, I'm from Chiapas, it's border of Mexico and Guatemala. And it's one of the very nice, uh, the Mayans ruins is Palenque. Uh, it's in the, in the middle of the jungle. Like seriously, like you see it's a square of the jungle and the middle is the city. Hmm. They didn't have airplanes, right? I mean, it's another topic, right? We can go through it. But it's interesting. It's like in the middle of the, of the jungle is the huge city. And they call it the, the white uh, city. Why? Because those, that's the only ones. The stones? The stones are so white. Hmm. Wow. Natural. Okay, natural. It's not like browns like that or something wow. like that. You know, through the years, you know, it's kind of old or something. But uh, you clean it. I mean, it's white. Beautiful. And then it's another city it's called Bonampak. And uh, when we went, it's, it's kind of like a, the small ones of that area, right? And nobody was there. I'm not kidding you. Like me and my wife, I mean, we're like, do you want to go to the tour? I was like, <laughs> yeah, we know what is here. But the thing is, it's so quiet. Yeah. And you hear the wind. I mean, I mean, not kidding you. So we were walking around and, you know, reading and everything. Uh, the one thing I would just want to tell you is that you walk there and just to click in your head, it's like, can you imagine just 100 years ago, there were people here, you know, so like a, the whole yeah. civilization that were a huge thing. So my point is, and I, I, I asked the guy, I was like, where, where uh, is there more digging here and stuff like that? He said, yeah, he said, do you see all these a little a little hill, the little teeny hills, you know, close to them. He said, underground, <laughs> it's more pyramids. Wow. wow. I was like, what? He said, yeah, it's a, the thing is that for the, you know, the budget and the government and all stuff. Right. I said, but that's why a lot of people from uh, another countries, they come over here, they get permit, and it's like, hey, you want to, you know, spend the money, you know, your budget, mm. go do it. But they, uh, the one thing, they was so... It just, they were very sacrificial in yeah. stories and in all the stuff that just in the 50s, they just learned, they found this Pakal king, the king yeah, Pakal. I've heard of that. I've heard and of that. that was the uh, the son of the god. Yeah. Kind of interesting, right? Yeah. Son of the god. And they just found in the, in the 50s the tomb. And it, it just, it's a lot of history, you know? That is amazing. Yeah. Do you know it's another prophecy? Uh, the Quetzalcoatl, uh, they were waiting uh, because they, when they came, the, 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 the Spaniards, they came from Europe to Mexico, well, not Mexico, but that was the, the land right here in America. And they found the cross. Hmm. And they thought it was like, oh, there was Christ in here. You know, Christians, they already came to, mm -hmm. to evangelize. And they said, no, that's north, south, east, west. And the thing is, they, and they said, well, all this stuff that you guys learn about to do good and to do evil, this wrong and everything, because every civilization has like 
like rules, you know, like yeah, laws, right. laws and right. everything. What do you guys do? Learn that one a prophet came. White. It was not white skin, but it was like light, lighter than they lighter are. than they were. Yeah, with a beer. And let me tell you, indigenous, you know, Mexicans, you know, Aztecs and Mayans, you don't see any beer over there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they said that they, this person came and teaches how to do the good and all the stuff. Amen. They said, but never saw that person again. And that's prophetic in their, and, and the Aztecs and Mayans uh, prophecy. Right? Amen. So, wow. kind of interesting. That, that is very interesting. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about another one. And we're going to, we're going to mention a couple of these, but this is one of the primary uh, figures that are being promoted right now. It is the, uh, it's called the Buddha or Maitreya Buddha, the Buddha of loving kindness. This Maitreya, it's actually called the Maitreya Project. If you look it up online, um, they started, I believe it was in 1990, 91, somewhere right around there. They started gathering money and they are planning and preparing to erect the world's largest Buddha statue, 500 foot, Interesting. 500 foot statue That's, yeah. in India of the Maitreya Buddha. And you go, okay, well, who cares? I mean, I've had people tell me before at church, I've never even heard of Maitreya. I mean, what, how is this important? Let me show you why. This is a man named Benjamin Krem. He has spoken at the United Nations. He has spoken at huge gatherings with world leaders. They invite him to come and speak because he channels the spirit of Maitreya. Uh-oh. So Maitreya would speak through him to warn the world about what was about to take place. And it's scary too, because some of the things that he was being told are correct, Mm -hmm. but then there was also a lot of things that were mixed that were wrong. So the devil loves to bring truth and error, because if it's got a little bit of truth in it, people will swallow the whole thing and then they're poisoned and die. But listen to what Benjamin Krem said. He said, speaking of Maitreya, He has been expected for generations by all the major religions. Although the names are different, many believe that they all refer to the same individual, the world teacher whose personal name is Maitreya. Mm -hmm. And you can look him up online on YouTube and you can find numerous, and I'm not encouraging people because Mm -hmm. you're listening to somebody who's being inspired by the devil. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to do research, to understand, that's good. But pray before you do the research. Because yeah. there's sometimes I've started listening to an interview yeah. with somebody, and I'm like, I can feel, <laughs> I can feel <laughs> there's evil spirits. I saw an interview with Morgan Freeman that he was doing, and it was like, I was sitting there, and it was like the Lord spoke to me and said, cut it off. You're listening to the devil talk to you right mm-hmm. now. And it was, it was, you could feel something inside. It was almost like inside your head trying to, to, to rearrange the Rubik's cube. Mm. It's like, I'm there and it's like, my thoughts were like, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's, uh, get it back on the Bible. But you could feel a spirit trying to change the way that you were thinking by listening. Um, you, just since you brought that up, while I'm putting together this thing on the law of attraction, man, it, I can see the appeal to people. I mean, you just say these things and you're, it's gonna change your life. Positivity, you know, be positive and good things will come to your life. There's a lot of like, subtle truths in there and you're like they just take jesus out yeah yeah i i can see what you're talking about let's go one more here's another one from the dalai lama he's probably one of the world's greatest religious leaders he said world peace must develop from inner peace peace is not just the absence of violence peace is the manifestation there's that word again Mm -hmm. of human compassion Okay, so far so good. <clears throat> Maitreya, the Buddha of loving kindness. The very name Matri means loving kindness. In today's world, we really need Matri, okay. Maitreya, loving gone. kindness. Now we've gone left. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's love and you're good with that. But then if love steps out of what God's word says, then it's, it's a different love. It's mm. false. This is what's interesting. Daniel chapter 8, verse 24 through 25, and Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 2, speaking about this power in the last days, the Antichrist power, it says, His power shall be mighty, 
but not by his own power. So this being is going to have miracle working power, but it's not of himself. He shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice. And he shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Mm. So whoever this antichrist figure is, this, this coming cosmic Christ, it says he'll destroy the mighty and the holy people. Mm. And through his policy, he shall cause craft, that means treachery and deceit, to prosper mm. in his hand. Mm. So when you see people that are proclaiming God can give us victory over sin, mm -hmm. and they're being persecuted, and they're saying God wants us to be holy, and they're being persecuted, yeah. This power that claims to be Christian is persecuting those that are proclaiming God can give us victory. Yeah, there'll probably be a lot of Christians who won't be persecuted because they conform to this. Well, yeah. That's right. I agree with that. We can just live in sin. God, yeah. I'm like, look, if God saved me from alcohol, can he not save me from every other sin? No. Mm -hmm. why, why do I want to be broken? That's like saying, no, I want to go to the hospital. I just want you to give me some good food, but I don't want you to touch the cancer. And you're like, yeah, but we can cure the cancer in a week. No, no, I like the cancer. That's what we say about sin. Mm -hmm. Sin's killing us, and mm -hmm. we're going as Christians. No, I don't want to give sin up. Yeah. Wasn't it the Beatles that said, all you need is love? Yeah. Oh, song. wow, that's love right. All you need. Over and over again. Over, over and over mantra. again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to write that down and remember that. That's a good point. Speaking of this power, it says he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace he shall destroy many. By peace. Whoa. In order to keep the peace, he's going to destroy many of the holy mm. people. That's interesting. Right now we're seeing that. Yeah. I mean, this right here alone could be a whole program. But all over the world, we're seeing the whole world coming together saying we need peace. We need Everybody needs to come together as one. We need to set aside our differences. Um, but there's only one person that can bring peace, and that's Christ. He is the Prince of Peace. Is anything wrong to bring together peace, brother? Yeah. There's nothing yeah. wrong. There's nothing wrong with everyone coming together yeah. as one. Yeah. But the only way everyone can be one is on God's Word. Amen. Because otherwise, if I set the truth to the yeah. side in order to become one, your unity as one is a lie. And God is love. But what kind of peace the, the world wanted <clears throat> to bring? This yeah. yeah, it's interesting because in the Tower of Babel, he said the people have become as one. And That's look a, at this evil thing they're doing. But then Jesus said, I pray that the people become as one as me and you are one. So there's a different kind of oneness that he mm -hmm. wants. And you know, it's interesting because what you just said, Jesus said, Father, I pray that they all might be one as we are one. Mm -hmm. I am in you yeah. and you are in me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if God is in each of us, we're one. But if the enemy is in the rest of the world, they become one. And that's what's happening. You're mm -hmm. seeing two armies are being formed. You've got those that are filled with the spirit of the living God, and you've got those that are filled with every unclean and hateful spirit, like Revelation 18. Yeah. Babylon has fallen. She's mm -hmm. full of demons. It's talking about people. It's not talking about a building or a city. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's people. So how are they going to bring the peace? Let me show you a couple of things. The peace symbol everybody is familiar with. I mean, we the see that all the time. Fruit. Yeah. Um, this one they're actually showing. I wish I had a higher resolution. It's got all the different symbols for all these different world religions, and they're all saying, you know, let's come together in peace. The other one, the world peace gong, this one was startling. And you see all the major world religions and all the flags, they're all saying, we want peace. We want to have union. We want to have world peace. This one caught my attention. Aikido Ka, training peaceful warriors for all ages peaceful to warriors. lead a peaceful world. Mm. Okay. What? So we've got UN peacekeeping forces. We are going to go in with guns and we're going to force you to have peace. Right. By peace, he will destroy many. And this other one is actually, and the only reason I'm bringing up the martial arts is yeah. because I was in that for so long. And yeah. it, I was like, this has nothing to do with peace. What are these people doing? Yeah. International Uchiru World Peace Seminar 2013. Look at the guy's faces. Yeah. Really peaceful. I mean, yeah, I mean, those, right? those are the kind of guys I want taking care of my grandchild. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, but they're, they're they say they're training for peace, and I've got I've got tons of other posters of this from the same type of people, and they're all saying, 
we're training in karate for peace. We're training in this for peace. We're doing this for peace. Mm. The peace that they want, though, is not the peace with God. Mm. You can only have peace with God through Christ Jesus, and Christ Jesus is the Word of God. Mm. You can't live in op opposition to God's Word and yet have peace with Him. This one I thought was interesting. You see the United Nations on the left-hand side, you know, mm. their symbol, and on the right you see a United Nations symbol for peace. Look at that dove. Does, Does that look angry. like a peaceful, happy, joyful dove? Mm. That's an angry, that looks like Upset. that would peck your eyeballs out <laughs> if you didn't do what it wanted you to do. So where do you find that logo? I mean, the, the, that's, is that's, this organization or something? No, or, that's or UN. That's the United Nations. For peace. Just the United Nations in period, in general. That's one of their logos. With the white dove? Yeah. This reminds wow. me of the Denver airport murals and stuff yeah they're like stabbing the dove and... so i mean when i saw that i was like wait a minute a dove is supposed to be a symbol of peace that dove does not look happy mm. so and there's a reason why i'm showing that look at this mm. next one here we have a religious world leader that was at a huge gathering at the vatican and out of nowhere these doves or white pigeons decided to come down and greet him and the whole world said this was a miracle. It was right. all over the news when this happened. He's got a dove. Now, wait a minute. There's a story in the Bible about yeah. a dove coming down That's right. on another person. Jesus. Yeah. On Jesus. What do you think this is? And it's also interesting because this man, his office, he claims to be Christ on earth, yeah. the vicar of Christ Rep in the place of God. I've even seen when he attended the United Nations, like, they introduce him as the Holy Father, and everybody stands up and claps. I'm just like, whoa, excuse yeah. me? <laughs> I know. That was interesting. When my wife went on a mission trip to Israel, she said um, she had an Islamic uh, man that was driving their, their bus. And they were driving, and he was being pretty quiet because all these are like Christians that are on this trip. And then all of a sudden, there was a huge billboard on the side of the road that had a picture of the Pope on it. And he said, look, look, the Holy Father. Mm. And my wife is like, he's not my father. Mm. And <laughs> when she said that, she said there was anger in his eyes. Wow. She said all the Muslims there, they all look to the Pope and say he's number one. Wow. Mm. I know. And then my wife came home and she was like, I used to think Walter Weith was, you know, a little bit of a nut. Mm. She said, I went there and I saw it. She said, it's exactly the way yeah. he described it. Mm. He said, you'll see a mosque on one side of the street and there'll be a Catholic cathedral on the other side. And he said, they're almost identical. Uh, this lightning connection. We showed that <laughs> in a video cool. <laughs> of uh, that is topic is Islamic. Steve, what's that guy? Steve Harvey. Did you see that video? Uh uh. There's a, a video of Steve Harvey right now talking about how mm, uh, his son is a Muslim or something. And anyway, Steve Harvey is a self professed Christian, but on this video he's coming out wearing all the Muslim garb. And for some reason they, they talk about this mosque, or it's a, a Catholic church. No, it's a mosque. Mary. A mosque that says our mother Mary or something on there. Yeah. And yeah, it was it was really weird. And they've got they've got uh the Muslims in, in Israel or not in Israel, but in that area, the Arab world, they've got um mosque there and they have a saint that they call um John the Baptist. And they actually in the mosques they have a like mm -hmm. a little room where you can go in and that's they say that's where you're supposed to worship and pray to John the Baptist. Wow. And I'm like, that's weird. Yeah, because anyway, they're really strict on only one God and all this, you know. Yeah. This one was another one that was interesting. This is a, a Buddhist uh, organization. And this is a quote from what the Bhagavad Gita, this is a Hindu religious book. It says, to reestablish Dharma, I come again and again. According to the Hindus and the Buddhists, like with the Maitreya, the Maitreya will manifest every thousand years, every two thousand years as a new figure. Mm. Last time he was here, they say, was when Jesus Christ was here. They say that was actually Maitreya that was manifesting in Christ. Wow. So they say this time Maitreya is coming as himself, not manifesting like he did in Buddha or in Jesus, which is a lie. And this will be the last time? That's what they say. Mm. Wow. Here's another lady uh, from MaitreyaTeachings.org. She says, Maitreya is an ascended master. 
a highly evolved spiritual being. Remember on the one we did yesterday where we talked about its evolution, mm -hmm. evolution to Godhood? She says, Maitreya is a highly evolved spiritual being who is in charge of the office of Christ. Mm -hmm. They say the office of Christ consists of many thousands of ascended masters. Ascended masters means you've been in some occult practice like Keith and I were in, in martial arts or in Qigong or in yoga, and you reach enlightenment. You actually reach nirvana or enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And then you become an ascended master. And when you die, you don't die. You become one with the universal energy, which is what Obi-Wan and Yoda mm -hmm. and all them said. You become one with the force. Mm -hmm. Those whole, All those movies are doing is they're teaching us this doctrine. Mm -hmm. So she says the office of Christ consists of many thousands of ascended masters, including Jesus, Muhammad, Guatemala, the Buddha, and Mother Mary. She's mm. saying all of them are Christ figures. Then she says Maitreya was in charge of the office of Christ when the Christ energy was channeled through Jesus some 2,000 years ago. Maitreya now speaks to the human channels around the world to convey his message of the coming of the new age. Wow. Maitreya is pretty confusing, huh? Yes. You have Jesus, Muhammad, mm. Buddha, yeah. so, so many different messages. He's this energy that manifests through these people's lives. And what they do with Christ is they say, well, Christ was a human being that was filled with the Maitreya energy. So they can then profess that they believe in Jesus, but you don't know what they mean when they say that. Mm. Mm. So question, how this person, Mar Mar Maitreya? No, Margaret. Uh, Margaret. Margaret. Uh, how she knows this information? I mean, it's just... The, they, they channel it through spirits. Who give all the information, just the, yes. the spirit? Yes. You know, um, you can go into a meditation or you go into a trance or you, maybe you have a vision and you wake up and you do hand, automatic handwriting. I mean, it's a lot of information. So I was like, okay, how, oh, how this person get the information? You know what I'm saying? Maybe books. for other books or... Um, Somebody else. You remember Alice Bailey mm -hmm. and Madame Blavatsky? They did the same thing. Alice Bailey wrote tons of books, and she would sit down, and a spirit would move her hand. Mm -hmm. She would watch her hand as it was writing, and it would dictate the words to her. And is that New Age, or, or is it different, uh, this person? You no, say? it's New Age. Mm -hmm. New Age, but old New Age, like back in the 1800s, mm -hmm. early 1900s. Oh, no. And we believe this to be true. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah. I'm sure Satan visited all those people. He Amen. visited Jesus, but they mm -hmm. have his story wrong because Jesus declined that partnership. With Amen. The yeah. Amen. Yeah. Here's another lady. She is the one that really promoted A Course in Miracles. Her name is Mary M. Williamson. Now listen, we're seeing something common about what these different people are saying about Christ. She says, the name of Jesus Christ as such, as such, is but a symbol. It is a symbol that is safely used as a replacement for the many names of all the gods to which you pray. So see, you see what the devil's doing now. You know, you worship this God, you worship that God, you worship that God. Yeah, but they're all the same. We're just calling them by different names. She goes on and says, and this is actually a quote from her book, A Course in Miracles, for Christ takes many forms with different names until their oneness can be recognized. Jesus and other enlightened masters are our evolutionary elder brothers. That's terrifying. <laughs> That's terrifying. But this is how the devil's preparing for the last great deception. He's getting the whole world. The Course in Miracles, Oprah Winfrey promoted this yeah. for over a year on her show to millions. Millions of people partook of this, and they think it was true. It's very interesting. I mean, they put the name, you know, right there, a director and Encounter with Jesus Christ mm. in the evolution and enlightenment of the universe. They put species. that word, Jesus Christ, you know, they put that name, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So everybody's like, oh, well, you know what? I mean, it's Christian. It can be a good Christian book, or oh, maybe Christ. something more information, uh, you know, instead of the Bible, maybe it's another mystical thing that we didn't yeah. know as a Christian. Let's read that book, you know. And I mean, yeah, even if you read the whole thing, a direct encounter with Jesus Christ, that's Christian. In an evolution of enla and enlightenment, I mean, our walk is a growth, an evolution, if you will. So, I mean, yeah, that's very de deceiving to a Christian. It is. Until you open the cover. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, at the end of the day, you have to choose one or the other. Hmm. The Bible plainly says, who is a liar, but he 
who denies that Jesus yes. is the Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. And after that, it says, he is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Amen. So, you don't, you know, the world is offering one version, one option. The Bible has the other. You have to make a choice. Which one is true? If this is true, that cannot be true. Amen. That's, and that, that's very simple. It's the yeah. bottom line. And, you know, it's funny, too, because, like, people will say certain religions, well, they believe in Jesus, but they don't believe he was the Son of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. what, what, what Keith just said, yeah. you're Antichrist. Whoever mm -hmm. denies the Father and the Son mm -hmm. is Antichrist. It also says whoever denies that Christ came mm -hmm. in the flesh. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean he came in just flesh. It means our flesh. Mm -hmm. He took our nature mm -hmm. and he overcame it. Benjamin Krem, now listen to this. This was pretty startling. Benjamin Krem said, in the esoteric tradition, the Christ is not the name of an individual, but of an office in the hierarchy, a position. He says that the present holder of that office is Lord Maitreya, and he has held it for 2,600 years, and manifested, there's that word again, in Palestine through his disciple, Jesus. All of a sudden, he's calling Jesus the disciple of this being, Maitreya. He says, by the occult method of overshadowing. Isn't that an interesting term? There's somewhere in the Bible where it talks about the Spirit of God overshadowed. Um, when Jesus was there and he was healing, and it says the Spirit of the Lord, and it uses a word that implies that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the situation, but Jesus was healing people, and it said the Spirit of the Lord was there in power while he was doing this in order that it could be done. Wow. It says, this is the most frequent form used for the manifestation of, what's that word, Candy? Avatars. Avatars. Mm -hmm. When's that new movie come out? Have they released the second one yet? Or is he still working They're on working. it? James no. Cameron. I that film there. came out almost um, um, almost 10 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was 2000, what, 10? Mm -hmm. 2011? So it looks like December 16 of next year. Okay. Well, this is this is why we want to look at that. It's because people go, oh, it's a cool movie, Avatar. Mm -hmm. They do not come up with names out of a hat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like you just go, oh, I need some kind of weird name. You look at the movie Avatar, and it was a mixture or a, a, a movie about the union of a man with an alien creature. The man's mind in the alien creature's body. Now, let me show you what the word avatar means. In the Hindu, the word avatar means those that fell or descended from the heavens. I was just thinking, it looks like a Hindu god, blue. Yes. From yes. alien from heaven, right? Yeah. And what, what's amazing is, is it was a human mind in an alien body. A human possessing a god. Now you've got, the Fully truth ancient. is demons manifesting in human flesh. Mm -hmm. Here's another definition. It says, also defined as the descent, the appearing, the manifestation or incarnation of a Hindu god, such as Vishnu, Krishna, or Shiva to the earth. This is what they said about Christ. Mm -hmm. In addition, Hinduism confers the title of avatar to extraordinary individuals who have experienced self-realization. That means I realize that I'm God yeah. mm. and union with the universal energy. Before you're going to jump on that, I want to just want to make a, a, a comment. Uh, do you know that the movie Avatar, it was the high movie of uh, people that after they watch a movie, I mean, we're talking about like three hours of that movie and people that finished watching that movie and they had these suicidal, suicidal thoughts. thoughts. Check out this comment left on a fan website. Here it is. When I woke up this morning after watching Avatar for the first time yesterday, the world seemed gray. It was like my whole life, everything I've done and worked for lost its meaning. Lost its meaning after watching this movie? That's what's going on here? Call in. want to hear from you. All right, Joe, did... These people who are posting, I mean, are they adding details of their life? Uh, so you kind of know, well, hey, life isn't that great. So, yes, that would make the movie and uh, this world that much more appealing. I think the great thing is on these online forums, now they're finding a community of people who feel the same way. And through finding that community, they're starting to feel better about themselves and about their life. Do you know, what, do you know what's interesting? Because I've read the article. Mm. 
And that's what CNN said. They said, yeah. this is what we believe is causing the suicidal mm -hmm. thoughts. Let me tell you what I believe caused mm -hmm. them. Avatar means the manifestation of those that fell from heaven. Demons fell from heaven. Mm -hmm. Fallen angels fell from heaven. Yeah. People go and watch for three hours evil spirits manifesting in actors, and those spirits are then influencing the thoughts of suicide and You'll depression. I was setting a wicked thing before my eyes. Why? Because you're inviting in demons. You're opening the door. Yeah. That's scary. We talked about this man on one of our previous shows, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. He said, I believe that the Messiah whom we await, whom we all without any doubt await, is the universal Christ. That is to say, the Christ of evolution. Mm. This is a Jesuit priest. <laughs> this man spoke to, he influenced a lot of the people of the UN. And he was telling them, just like Benjamin Krem, the Maitreya is coming. The, the UN is preparing for this event. And I don't want to get into too much weirdness, but we've also seen just since 2019, the whole world has turned upside down about the fear about aliens oh, and yeah. all that. 2019, our current president at that time, Trump, said we're initiating a new space armed force, force yeah. the Space Force, the sixth branch. Isn't that funny? The six, yeah, 666. Right. Six we six had five six. branches of the armed forces. In 2019, he said, now we're going to have the six. It's called Space Force. And mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I mean, I, I'm not belittling Trump, okay? He was fun to watch, but but I'm like, he, he was he was a character. He was not what, yeah. you, he, you wouldn't look at him and go, hey, he's a presidential candidate, you know? The agenda would have happened no matter who was in, no yeah. matter who the face of the president mm -hmm. was. But he's for, just doing orders, man. He's for just me watching stuff. him, I was like, Okay, I mean, you know, because he's just, he's a character. Mm -hmm. But then I saw Vice President uh, Pence get up there, and Pence is like presidential. I mean, he looks like he plays the part. He looks serious. He's not joking. I'm not a clown. I'm not goofing off. I'm really not, cool. you know, he was like, this is what we're going to do. And they announced this at military bases. Yeah. Well, then I was like, okay, I wonder who else is doing this. I got online. There are numerous other nations in the world, France, I think Japan, and there was a couple other ones I found back in 2019. They all initiated the same type of space warfare program the same year. Mm -hmm. In the last six months, we have seen unbelievable amounts of stuff come out on the news. Uh, the Pentagon has just been commanded b before President Trump you know, left office that they had to release all the documents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like something is about to happen. They are preparing for something to happen. So this guy is a Jesuit guy, right? Yes. Did he teach and he say, I believe that the Messiah is they, a universal Christ. It's universal Christ and is the, the Christ of evolution. It means we all <laughs> evolve, evolve until we reach Christhood. So my question is, the Pope right now. Shh, save that, save that. Save that. We're, we're almost there. Save that. <laughs> Have you been reading my notes? <laughs> no, man, I'm just... <laughs> this is Dr. M. Scott Peck. He's a psychiatrist and Harvard graduate. Listen to what he said. And he, he's written a number of books. He wrote a book called The Road Less Traveled, which, praise God, it needs to be less traveled. Mm. He says, we are growing toward Godhood. God is the goal of evolution. It is God who is the source of the evolutionary force and God who is the destination. Hmm. This is what's being taught in our world hmm. and in a lot of our seminaries. This is Swami Vivekananda. He's a, a Hindu, was a Hindu guru. He said, each soul is potentially divine. The goal is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature, external nature and internal nature. And then he says, you can achieve this divinity either by work or worship or psychic control or philosophy by one or more or all of these and be free. This is the whole of religion. Uh, we don't see that in lots of video games, especially uh, Doctor mm -hmm. Strange. I don't think it's called. Yes. The superhero. Yeah, the Bible, and this is this is the counterfeit that they're counterfeiting. God's word says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be made partakers of the divine nature. By God's promises, we're made partakers, not just of the divine character, but of his nature. Yeah. God's nature is this. Deity does not sin. Deity does not die. 
Mm -hmm. Wages of sin is death. If mm -hmm. you don't sin, you don't die. If sin doesn't have dominion over you, death has no dominion over you. That's what the 144,000, the Bible says, they're going to come to the place in their relationship with God where they believe His promises so much that they, they can't die. Wow. That's what God wants. That's what God wants to restore to us. We're going to close up. It says, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive even the very elect. Behold, I have told you beforehand. So Christ has warned us beforehand that this day was going to come. And I think we're seeing it now like it's never been seen before. A quick overview. Maitreya Buddha, um, the Hindu Krishna, they're all proclaiming that they're expecting Krishna to manifest again physically. Um, the New Age Cosmic Christ, there's so many books on that, we, we don't even have time to begin to, to go through them. Mm. But they're saying that the Cosmic Christ is about to appear. Uh, the Islamic Imam Mahadi, Islam is saying the Mahadi is about to appear. Orthodox Jewish Messiah. Orthodox, Orthodox Judaism is proclaiming that the Messiah is about to appear. They don't realize he came once. He's coming the second time. And then you have Christians that are saying Christ is about to return to set up a kingdom here on earth. Wow. So it's like the world is being primed for what we're about to see. Mm -hmm. every, every New Age pagan and Masonic belief, as well as that of all Eastern mysticism, is that man is evolving to Godhood. They teach that within each human being is a God spark, that's what they call it, which only needs to be awakened through occult mystical practices. Once this has been achieved, man is said to have recognized his own divinity. But this is in verity the same lie spoken by Satan through the serpent to our parents in the Garden of Eden. You shall be as gods. This is a, another Hindu guru, Swami Muktananda. Listen to what he said. He said, it is only when Kundalini, and Kundalini is the serpent power in yoga, that the whole purpose of yoga is to awaken, awaken that mm -hmm. serp, the serpent that's inside of you, and get it to go up your spine from where it's at at the tailbone to here, the crown. Why would I want a snake to go from down there to mm -hmm. up here? I think you need to repeat what the purpose of yoga is just one more time. The enti according to them, the entire purpose of yoga is to awaken the kundalini serpent. Right, not for exercise. Not for stretching. Right. That, yeah, and we've got videos we've done on yoga that yeah, goes through that. Check that out, holy yoga. Yeah, it says that only when the kundalini is awakened that we become aware of our true nature, hmm. of our greatness, of the fact that not only do we belong to God, but that we are God. That's mm -hmm. what they say, the Hindus. When one acquires the strength of kundalini, one expands infinitely, and then one assimilates the whole universe. One is able to see the whole universe within oneself. One no longer remains a bound, limited creature because one achieves total union with what they call God. Mm. That's terrifying mm. because they're being joined in union with pagan gods, with evil spirits. Moriah Ueshiba, he was the founder of Aikido. He said, the, the art of peace I practice has room for each of the world's eight million gods, mm -hmm. and I cooperate with them all. I've had many wow. people that have written to me and they go, Eric, what about Ueshiba? I mean, he talked about God. I had a number of his books and he would say that in there, the God I worship, and he sounded really mm -hmm. good. And then you find a quote like this and you're like, oh yeah, did you know that the God he worshiped includes eight million gods? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, there's one God, and I'm one with him. He said, the God of peace is very great and enjoins or includes all that is divine and enlightened in every land. The divine is not something high above us. It is in heaven. It is in earth. It is inside us. That's pantheism. Mm -hmm. This is a quote from Great Controversy, um, 1888 version, page 561. This one is powerful. Listen to what we're told, Satan has long been preparing for his final effort to deceive the world. The foundation of his work was laid by the assurance given to Eve in Eden. You shall not surely die, 
For in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. God said the wages of sin is death. Satan said you won't die. If you sin, you'll know good and evil. Then you'll be like God. Little by little, Satan has prepared the way for his masterpiece of deception in the development of spiritualism. He has not yet reached the full accomplishment of his designs, but it will be reached in the last remnant of time. So what he began in Eden, telling man that you can become a god, has something to do with the very last deception, mm -hmm. man being proclaimed as god. Mm -hmm. And we saw that when we opened up with Second Thessalonians. He will sit in the temple of God claiming to be God. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the Bible calls him the man of sin. A lot of people, like you were talking about, Mikey, when they, when they hear the word antichrist, they think, it's this person that hates Christianity, he hates mm, the Bible. Against. He, yeah, against. But the word antichrist in the scripture actually means the one who stands in place of Christ or a counterfeit or substitute or a vicar of mm, Christ. Mm. So the word has a completely different meaning than what most Christians realize. How many people have ever heard of John Bunyan? Mm -hmm. yep. Not Paul Bunyan, but John mm. Bunyan. Um, Pilgrim's he, Progress. Pilgrim's Progress, right. Yeah. A powerful book. And there's a, a good version of that called uh, The Amplified. Yeah, it's by a man named Jim Poppas. If you ever get a chance to read it, it you can't put it down. Um, listen to what Bunyan said. And this was written back almost 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. He said, Antichrist is the adversary of Christ. An adversary, really. A friend, pretendedly. So then Antichrist is one that is against Christ, one that is for Christ, and one that is contrary to him. Hmm. This is that mystery of iniquity. Oh, wow. He is against Christ indeed, for Christ in word, and yet contrary to him in practice. Wow. I thought, what? this is 500 years ago. Yeah. Wow. When Protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf and grasp the hand of the Roman power. And we're seeing that now. Protestants, evangelicals are clasping hands with the Roman power. When she shall reach over the abyss and clasp hands with spiritualism. That's why we're seeing all the spiritualism being introduced through movies and music and video games and books. Mm -hmm. It's getting Christians that claim they love Jesus to take hold of another hand. When under the influence of this threefold union, apostate Protestantism, Roman Catholicism, and spiritualism, our country shall make provision for the spread of papal falsehoods and delusions, then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan. That's that last great deception, mm. and that the end is near. This is from a periodical in 1896. Listen to what we're told. It's called Review and Herald, April 14. As the second appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ draws near, satanic agencies are moved from beneath. Satan will not only appear as a human being, but he will personate Christ. Mm. This is just food for thought. I could be wrong, okay? Food for thought. There's two ways that I read that. Satan will not only appear as a human being, but he will personate Christ. It's like, he's not going to do this, but he is going to do this. Or, Satan will not only appear as a human being, but he's also going to impersonate Christ. Yeah. When Christ came the first time, God was manifest in the flesh, Emmanuel. And there's places in the Bible, in the Gospels, where it says there were a few times in Christ's ministry where his divinity flashed through humanity. Mm -hmm. It's almost like this earthen vessel could not contain the glory that was in him, and mm -hmm. Christ was so full of the power of his Father and the Holy Spirit that it flashed through humanity. If Christ came in the flesh and his glory flashed through humanity, what if Satan comes first as a man? Mm -hmm. And that glory of his angelic majesty flashes through humanity. Do you know what the world would say? Man has become a god. Right. The whole world, if that was to happen, where you had a man, the world looks up to, and then he starts doing miracles, and glory mm. is manifest, the whole world would say, he's done exactly what we all want, mm. to become gods. Exactly what Satan declared would happen mm. in Genesis. The serpent. It was all the way to the top. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Listen to this. It says, And the world who has rejected the truth of God's word will receive him as Lord of lords and King of kings. Satan will exercise his power and he will work upon the human imagination. He will corrupt both the minds and bodies of men and will work through the children of disobedience, fascinating and charming as does the serpent. We opened with this, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day of Christ's return shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be unveiled, unmasked. Mm. If Satan actually is hiding inside of a man, remember, son of perdition, Judas, Satan entered into him, into a man to do his work. Mm. If that son of perdition is unmasked, He's going to be revealed for who he really is. This was interesting. Time Magazine, hmm. Pope for a New World. Wow. I mean, wow. Hmm. You could just put it out there. There's lots of different magazines that have, have you know, hosted or portrayed Pope Francis. I'm just going to show you a couple of quotes from the Protestant reformers. And this is, I'm doing this also for our brothers and sisters that may be in different churches. Hmm. They don't know what their founders said. You just go through a couple of these. John Wycliffe, he lived from 1324 to 1384. He was the morning star of the Protestant Reformation. Listen to what he said. It is supposed and with much probability that the Roman pontiff is the great Antichrist. That was, I mean, 1700 years ago almost. Mm -hmm. Um, 700. Yes, I'm sorry, 700. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Keith. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther, 1483 through 1546, he was a Lutheran. He said, I am practically cornered and can hardly doubt anymore that the Pope is really the Antichrist Mm. because everything so exactly corresponds to the way of his life, actions, words, and his commandments. Already, he said, I feel greater liberty in my heart for at last I know the Pope is Antichrist and that his throne is that of Satan himself. Mm. Strong words. That is strong words. Mm. But you know what? Just recently, within the past two years, the Roman Catholic Church has said, we forgive uh, Martin Luther for what he did and we're welcoming him back home. Mm. And the Lutheran Church has jumped right on board. William Tyndall lived from 1493 to 1536. Listen to what he said. The Jews look for Christ and he has come 1,500 years ago, and they are not aware. Likewise, we also have looked for Antichrist, and he has reigned as long, and we are not aware. Wow. This was in the 1500s. Mm. He's saying Antichrist has been reigning, and we've been looking in the wrong place. Mm. John Calvin, 1509 to 1564, he was a Presbyterian. He said, some persons think us too severe and censorious when we call the Roman pontiff Antichrist. But those who are of this opinion do not consider that they bring the same charge of presumption against Paul himself, after whom we speak and whose language we adopt. I shall briefly show that Paul's words in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 are not capable of any other interpretation than Mm. that which applies them to the papacy. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. The Westminster Confession of Faith in 1647, there's a lot of evangelicals that hold to this doctrine. In that Confession of Faith, they said, there is no other head of the church but the Lord Jesus Christ, nor can the Pope of Rome in any sense be head thereof but is that Antichrist, that man of sin and the son of perdition Mm. that exalted himself in the church against Christ and all that is called God. I wish our brothers and sisters knew this. Mm. Charles Spurgeon, Baptist. Mm. Many, many evangelical and and Protestant churches literally look up to him. Listen to what he said. He lived from 1834 to 1892. He said, it is the bound duty of every Christian to pray against Antichrist. And as to what Antichrist is, no sane man ought to raise a question. If it be not the popery in the church of Rome, there is nothing in the world that can be called by that name. You can't be any clearer than that. Some of you may remember this. You remember when Pope Francis first was elected to office? There was an event, and I've had to do a lot of research to go back to find it. 
Um, and it's hidden. It's been hidden well. But when the event happened, it was all over the news. When he went, when he was elected, they came and told him that he had been elected, and he asked if he could step inside of a room in the Vatican alone. And he closed the door and he went into the room. Don't know how long he stayed in there. Don't have any details as to that. Maybe somebody knows. But he went into that room for a little while. When he came out, there were testimonies from the bishops in the news. The bishops that knew him before he was elected to Pope, different person. They said it's not the same person that walked mm -hmm. into the room. Mm -hmm. He looks the same. We know it's the same man, but he's his character is completely different. They said he was always somber, very solemn. Mm -hmm. He was a Jesuit. I mean, you don't you don't be a Jesuit and you're not giggly and goofy. Mm -hmm. um, when he came out of the room, they said he was charismatic. Wow. Not like speaking in tongues, but he was loving, hugging babies and kissing Muslims and, and washing Muslims' very feet and very playing pop, Christian pop music. Right. I mean, at the Vatican, that's never happened. We've never seen a, a Pope do that before. Mm. His own sister actually said the same thing. She said, I, don't, I know this is my brother, but I don't recognize the man. She mm. said, this is not the man that I've always known. Wow. Something changed when he went in there. So I started looking because I remembered when this happened. I guess it was back in like 2013. Do you remember the date that he was elected? I think it was 2013. Um, but when he was elected, it was everywhere. And I went online to find it. and You couldn't find anything except articles that were saying it was all a fraud. And I'm like, well, that's convenient. We, you know, we rewrite mm -hmm. history like 1984, mm -hmm. George Orwell, mm -hmm. make it fit what we want. But I found the source of where the story came from. It was an interview with an Italian man named Scalfari. Uh, it was September 24, 2013. Scalfari was a Roman Catholic, and he had gotten very disillusioned with the Catholic Church. And so he became a, a pronounced, open atheist. I mean, and he also wrote uh, a journal. He had a like a periodical, a magazine. Mm -hmm. Like every month or you know, every couple of weeks, this magazine came out. And he opened this magazine up and he would condemn the church, the Roman Catholic Church in Italy mm -hmm. for all the abuses and the things he thought was wrong about it. Well, one day, Pope Francis picked up the phone and called him personally on the phone and said, I'd like to meet with you. Not an interview. This is just a meeting. I would like to meet with you. So the man was sort of taken aback. And Pope Francis is trying to say, I can win by peace. This man professes to hate me, to hate the church now. Let me show you what the church is going to do. We're going to love him anyway. Hmm. So the Pope met with him for a couple of hours. You know, he had his guards that were around, but not sitting right there with him. And these two older men, I don't remember how old Scalfari is, but he's an older man, I think older than the Pope. They had this discussion. And the Pope described that event of when he went into that room. And he said a supernatural thing happened to him. Whoa. He said everything changed inside of him. He said, and I knew I had complete peace that I was supposed to take this position. And he described this to Scalfari. Scalfari has been interviewing people for years. Hmm. Every time he does an interview, he never has a recorder. He never uses a tape recorder, never digitally records. He doesn't even take notes. He's just got a memory. Wow. And they know that. They know that because of every other interview he's done. Well, now the Vatican has come out and said, look, Scalfari lied. He's mm. not telling the truth. You know, it wasn't even an interview. He didn't have any recording of it. He has no proof. And Scalfari, when he heard this, he actually released another statement in his paper. And he said, if what the Pope said is false, all the Pope has to do is come out publicly and denounce what I said. The Pope has never done that, mm. ever. And as an atheist, I mean, what kind of agenda does this guy really have? Yeah. You know, that sounds more like a supernatural thing that atheists would just disregard as whatever. You know. Yeah. And for me, you know, like the Vatican, they released, I've got a picture here of the Vatican news um, where they talked about how it was, it was really misinterpreted. You know, the Pope really didn't say those things. Mm -hmm. There's not really the room where he said the room was. And I was like, so who do you believe? Well, when you realize that the word Vatican actually means the divining serpent mm -hmm. and serpents have forked tongues, it means mm -hmm. you can't believe what's coming out of their mouth because they're speaking out of both sides. I'm like, you know, you got to make your own decision about that. Mm -hmm.
To go on just a little bit, Great Controversy, page 624. Listen to this. The crowning act in the great drama of deception, mm -hmm. Satan himself will personate Christ. The church has long professed to look to the Savior's advent as the consummation of her hopes. Now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. This is the strong, almost overmastering delusion. Wow. This is what Christ said, don't even go look. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't even go look. Like the Samaritans who were deceived by Simon Magus in Acts chapter 8, the multitudes from the least to the greatest will give heed to these sorceries, saying, this is the great power of God. But, this is a great promise, the people of God will not be misled. Amen. The teachings of this false Christ are not in accordance with God's word, with the scriptures. Right. His blessing is pronounced upon the worshipers of the beast and his image, the very class upon whom the Bible declares that God's unmingled wrath shall be poured out. So it's by God's word that we'll be able to detect the deception. Also, I want to share with you very interesting, you know, you were talking about the, in the Latin, you know, Vatican is serpent. The divining serpent. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And in the beginning also we were talking, you were mentioned, you know, Quetzalcoatl, you know, the, yes. the prophecies and all stuff. But do you know what it means Quetzalcoatl? The, and I'm saying Quetzalcoatl, but that's how I yeah. pronounce But I'm not pronouncing it correct. You're yeah. saying it correctly. Yeah, it's yes. correct. Do you what, know what, what does that mean? I don't know what it means. What does it mean? Well, it's the, it's the language of the Aztecs with uh, Nahuatl, and it means it's a divine, right? It's just a divine, the word, the word worship, right? That God, Quetzalcoatl, it means serpent with feathers. Really? Yeah. It's, do, you know, do you know what's so weird about that? Mm. The ancient Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew writings describe that the serpent before Lucifer, before not Lucifer, Satan, before Satan had spoken through it, you know, used it as a medium, mm -hmm. they described the serpent as having wings, mm -hmm. which would be feathers. Yeah. In all the ancient Chinese writings, you see the description of the dragon, dragon as if it were a serpent with wings and, and legs. And you go to these pyramids and you see the, like the dragon or like a serpent with feathers. Yes, you I've, see I've seen photographs see of those. Pictures. Yes. So I just wanted to share that with you. I'm glad you shared that because that ties everything in together. And that, that's telling us that all of these different gods, no matter what they're mm. called, they're all going to be manifestations of Satan. Yeah. Only those who have been diligent students of the scriptures and who have received the love of the truth. Not just that we love the truth, the word of God, but we've received its love, his love for us. Mm. Amen. The love of the truth shall be shielded from the powerful delusion that takes the world captive. By the Bible testimony, these will detect the deceiver in his disguise to all the testing time will come and then shall that wicked be revealed we're told in second thessalonians whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him speaking of christ whose coming is after the working of satan Mm -hmm. with all power, signs, and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. That's what it all comes down to. Jesus told us, we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make Such us free. free. Mm -hmm. You know what God's word says in John 17, 17? Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word, word is truth. Is What's the first statement in the Bible that God said? Let there be light. Let there be what? Light. Let there be. Do you know what the promise he's made to us? Be ye therefore holy because I am holy. That's the word of truth. Do you know what the Bible says in 1 John 3 verse 1 and 2? Beloved, now we are sons and daughters of God. And it does not appear what we shall be, but we know when he appears, we're going to be just like him. Mm -hmm. So we've got many people that are going, I want to be a child of God, but I don't know how to get there. And God's going, you are. Stand up and walk like it. Mm -hmm. We are begotten again by the word of truth. That's what our safety is in, in God's word alone. What a great study, man. I love 
talking about last day's events. I love that we have the true enlightenment Amen. Right here in Amen. the Word of God. Thank you so much for you know showing us line upon line and bringing the pieces together, man. This is really becoming really clear. If you guys want to see more about this subject, you can actually watch a documentary from a friend of ours called School for Prophets, but the video is called From Babylon to America. It has over 6 million views collectively, and uh, rightfully so. It's a very good documentary. So check that out if, if some of this was like intriguing to you, but maybe you want to study more on it. That video has a lot in there. If you want to see more of Eric Wilson's stuff, you can go to where? Um, well, you just have to go to YouTube and type in Eric Wilson 7, and that, that takes you to our, our ministry page. All right, we'll put that link in the description. Thank you guys so much for being with us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. God bless.